And let's put uh, verse 5 up there. Verse 5. You know, we talk about man. <clears throat> God made man in his own image. That sounds like he must be pretty perfect <laughs> if we've been made in the image of God to start with. But Satan got in there. Man had a free will. And we know what we choose and what we decide today is going to affect our tomorrow. So anytime you go into an investment or you go into anything or do anything or make a decision on anything, you always have to consider how will it affect your tomorrow. For what we sow today will come up tomorrow. Because we reap what we sow. So when you learn that principle, then you start sowing good seed. And then you can know what's going to come up in the future. You follow me there? That's important. When decisions you make, make sure you make good decisions because there's a consequence to every decision. We learned that in school, didn't we? Effect. And what else? How did that go down? That's right. Effect. Cause and effect. Yeah, it's coming in. Sometimes my computer takes a little while to get up on the screen. Cause and effect. You can dislike it if you want to, but that's just the way it is. And the quicker we gear our minds and our hearts to understand that, then the better off we're going to be. But I want you to read this scripture now. For it was not to angels that God subjected the habitable world of the future of which we are speaking. Now stop for a moment. If it was not to angels that God subjected the habitable world of the future to, who did he subject it to? Somebody tell me. Everybody say, me, man. All right, next verse. It has been solemnly and earnestly said in a certain place. Now remember, it is written, it has been said in a certain place, meaning in the Old Testament, because they didn't have verses and chapters. Everybody understand that? So... If you can't remember the verse, I tell Susan, it is written. <laughs> or she can say, in a certain place, it is said. How many understand what I'm saying? All right. Let's read on. What is man, and that's woman too, that you are mindful of him? Let's stop for a moment. What are you? What am I? Now think for a moment. That's a hard task for some folks. But think for a moment. Why is God mindful of you and me? Hmm. Never thought about that, did you? Well, I have, of course. I've read this years ago before some of you was even born. What am I that God is mindful of me? Hmm. That you are mindful of him, that is man, or the son of man, that you graciously and helpfully care for and visit and look after him. You know, we might not think about it, but God has been watching over us long before we were even born. He knew, he chose us before the foundation of the world, that we were going to be his children. How many parents in here, even though your kids are grown up, uh, physically, anyway, <laughs> you're still mindful of them. Let me see your hands. <laughs> How many would like to get it off your mind? Get them off your mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> In certain cases, it's that way, you know. But you're still mindful of them, and God is mindful of us. Say, mindful. God is mindful of me. Say, you got to put the message in your own heart. You got to see that God's talking about you and me. Nobody else is sitting out there but you. He's talking about you. I'm preaching to you. He's mindful of you. He cares for you. He provided salvation for you. Just because Adam messed up, 
Jesus stepped in. Yes, by the disobedience of one man, we all became sinners, but I got good news for you. The obedience of another man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, because of his obedience, we have been made righteous. All charges have been dropped. Death has been annulled. Hello? Man, that ought to make you shout or say something. Jesus said, he that believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe that? He that believeth in Jesus Christ shall never die. You shall never die. Frances is not dead. She's more alive than all of us. And more freer from this old body. I was thinking, the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. I was thinking about Francis. I said, praise God, absent from the bed, present with the Lord. How many of you ever been in bed a long time and they can get a little sore after a while? Absent from the bed, present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Boy, what a great message. No wonder the Hebrew writer said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? A great salvation, what God has done. Now, <coughs> let's finish reading some of this. We find out that God cares for man. Go to the next verse. It, for some little time you have ranked him lower than and inferior to the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. Now stop and think and get into the scriptures and see what God is saying there. For a little time now, you have ranked man a little lower than the angels. How many of you know we shall judge angels one day? Yes. We shall judge angels and the world one day. Right. right now we're a little inferior to the angels. But yet he has crowned us, man, see it's a little h, we know it's man with glory and honor, and set him over the works of your hands. Now, let me tell you something. God has got a lot of confidence in us if he has set us over his works. Think about it. Powerful thought. Powerful thought. He has set us over the works of his hands. That's how mindful he is. That's how much he loves us. I think of some ministries that have sons and when they pass away their son takes over the ministry. That's good. That's wonderful. God has set us over his, the works of his hands. Yeah. Go to the next verse now. Now in this I want you to see that God loves you, that he's mindful of you, that he cares about you. He cares about everything that comes against you. But I'm here to tell you he's given us power over all the powers of the enemy. And we have to come to that realization. We don't have to tiptoe through the tulips. We can stand as men and women of God with the power of God that's been invested into us by our Heavenly Father. But there's some negative, mental, demonic thinking that has to get out of our brain. That's why our mind has to be renewed. Because you and I will be transformed. How? By the renewing of our minds. When we understand how much God loves us. God's given us power. You don't have to take a lot of that junk the devil puts on you. I've had people over the years in, in, our, in the ministry and, and, and call me up on the phone and tell me how horrible I am and this type of thing. Well, bless their little hearts. I love them. I bless them. I remind them, vengeth his mind, saith the Lord. Oh, my goodness. What does that mean to you? That means God will take care of it. That's why I say, oh, Lord, have mercy. Pray for your enemies. Because God's going to wring them alongside ours. Because he's mindful of his children. You don't mess with his children, devil. Some of them don't know it, but I've given them power over all the powers of the enemy. But they have to learn to open their mouth and they have to learn to speak. They have to learn to pray. 
why they come to church. That's why Pastor Bob tries to teach them. For we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. How many of you have ever seen a demon? There's one, two, three, four. I have. Wake up sometime. Oh, you again. Turn over, go to sleep. <laughs> Don't you remember Satan? You were defeated at Calvary. God pulled your teeth at Calvary. Yeah, you, you got a weapon, deception. Deception deceives people in making them think that he can control them. But see, when you learn God's word, when you learn that God is mindful of you and he's not left you down here as orphans, but he has made you sons and daughters of the living God. He has invested his power in you. Paul made it very clear. The power is not of these vessels, but it is of God that operates within us. But we have to learn how to shoot the gun. I trade my 22 in for a submachine gun now. When the devil comes at me, it is written. <laughs> Little extra bonus. <laughs> yeah, we fight. Amen. Some Christians don't fight. They just lay there and just let the devil just. <laughs> I'm not kicking. I was there at one time too. Then God spoke. He said, how long are you going to lay there and let the devil walk all over you, son? What do you mean, Lord? Get in my word and find out what I put in there for you. So I started becoming a student of the word. Reading it and reading it and reading it and reading it. Breaking down the words. For you have put everything in subjection under Bob's feet. Put it personal. Put your name in there. For you have put everything under your feet. Everything, son. Everything. Everything. <laughs> that was love, you know. Just love. <laughs> Better watch out when I turn my back. Bow! Ooh. No, he wouldn't do that. How many of you, some people just need to be woke up. How many needs to be woke up in here? No, you don't. You're the most awake Christian we got in here. For you have put everything in subjection to the church. It's all under your feet. That's why I like to dance. Oh, you like that, devil? <laughs> Woo! This is what God has done. He done it. Some of you are looking like... This ain't some religious club. We're the body of Christ. We've been placed on earth to rule and reign in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know where the biggest battle is, right between your two ears. Boop, right there. Hmm. Now, putting everything in the subjection to man, he left nothing outside of man's control. This is some new, this is some new teaching to some of you. Yeah, uh-huh. See, that'll mean nothing to you until the revelation hits you. And when the revelation hits you, you go, oh! Whew! Wow, all these years I let the devil run over me? Where's he at now? I used to get up and say, man, where's the devil at? Now I get up and say, where's the devil at? I'm going to turn him wrong side hours. <laughs> For God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Well, Bob, you have to holler, no, but I certainly enjoy it. He left nothing outside of man's control, but at present we do not see all things subject, subjected to him. Yeah. Oh. 
Go to the next verse. So that's where we're at. But we are able to see Jesus, who was ranked lower than the angels, just like us, for a little while, crowned him with glory and honor because of his having suffered death. Say, you will never suffer death. I think, wake her up, I think she's dying right there. Are you awake? Yeah, yeah, you awake? Just close one eye, it's okay, keep one open. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Look, do you need prayer? Is your eye hurting you? Oh, your eye fell out? <laughs> hey, I love you, okay? <laughs> Look, crowned him with glory and honor because of his having suffered death. Well, who did he suffer death for? Say me. me. He suffered death for me. You won't suffer death. He annulled death. Oh, your body will quit breathing. Do you want to take your body to heaven? How many wants to take their body to heaven? Well, you ain't. You're going to leave it down here. But we're going to dig a hole for it and put, it, put, put you in the hole. I tell Susan, I say, don't, please don't fix me all up with them flowers in that pretty casket. Just have Frank to make me a wooden box and put me in it, close the thing and, and put my body, you know, take care of it. It is the temple of God to place it in the ground and throw a couple candy bars in there because I get hungry. <laughs> All right. In order that by the grace unmerited favor of God to us sinners, he might experience death for every individual person. You won't have to experience death. That's right. That's why in the New Testament they fall asleep. Francis just fell asleep. That's right. Absent from the bed, present with the Lord. Amen. Powerful. Yes, Powerful. I went to a funeral one time. I've been to many more funerals than one time, believe me. And everybody was crying, and I understand that. We, you know, we miss each other uh, when somebody goes to heaven and leaves us down here in this cold world. And everybody was crying, and the preacher was crying. I said, what are you crying about? He says, I'm crying because they don't know that ain't her in the casket. That's just her shell. That was her coat she wore while she was on the earth. See, that, was the, that, that body was designed for this earth. It's not designed for heaven. See, a man must be born again before he can see the kingdom of God. So God is so gracious, he's got a new suit for us. That's the resurrected body. And see, th th this body here is experiencing, I hate to tell you, you can put all the makeup you want on, and I'm not kicking that now. Yeah, it helps us men that have to look. But eventually, these bodies are going to dry up like a prune. Oh, I know some of you cry. There ain't enough makeup in the world to change it, sister. So you might as well accept the fact that you ain't taking these bodies to heaven. I tell Susan, put as much as you can on your baby. I know somewhere behind all of that is my wife. And she says, well, I guess you think you don't need any. I said, <laughs> beg your pardon. <laughs> you don't see me putting lipstick on. <laughs> you don't hardly see me comb my hair anymore either because I ain't got much. 
But folks, I'm telling you, we need to get a hold of some things here. And really like what Paul said, we don't look at the things that we see, for the things that we see are temporary. They're just for a little time. You're just going to be on this earth for a little time. Think of eternities after eternities after eternities after eternities after eternities after eternities. Eternities after eternities after eternities after eternity. And down here, Paul says, this passing hour. You're here? Hallelujah. Well, where'd you go? Oh, we're gathered here today to pay our last respects to our dear sister and our dear brother who ugly the way. That's what the scripture says. You don't think I gotta take a look at that to read. You know, you think I well, listen to this now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you right here. Yeah. I won't go away. Look at my wife over there. He's lost his mind for sure. <laughs> now I forgot that where I found it. I got it, I got it. I was reading this the other day, I tell you. <laughs> Listen to this now. Therefore, we do not become discouraged. Uh, you can put it on the board. Uh, Second Corinthians. Uh, chapter 4 verse 16 let's read that therefore we do not become discouraged now who's we in this this is us this is Paul his associates utterly spiritless and exhausted and wearied out through fear though our outer man everybody tapped their outer man alright that's your outer man is progressively, <clears throat> I'm scared to use that word, decaying and wasting away. I don't care how much makeup you put on. At one time, you're going to have to face the truth, sister. That good looking face you got is decaying. Boy, what a message. What an encouraging word. And wasting away. Oh my goodness. Yet our inner self is being progressively new, renewed day by day. So I think it's probably uh, behooves us to spend more time making sure our inner man is strong and fed with the word of God. Because he's going to last forever. Yes. Let me tell you something. As a, the Bible says, as a tree falls, somebody help me with that. So as a tree falls, there it is. It ain't going to get no prettier. Just how it falls, the growth you have in Christ, that's it. And you have to spend eternity with that new man that still might be a little baby. Because you didn't feed it spaghetti and meatballs and chili and moon pie. Yeah, and Hargy Burgers. So think about it for a moment. As, oh, don't forget ice cream. As the tree falls, that's it. If it's a little tree, it's going to stay a little tree. If it's a big tree, it's a big tree. So this is the time to get that inner man being renewed day by day, progressively renewed day after day, stronger and going into the image of God. How many of you understand what I'm saying? I know I'm using uh, a little humor in this message, but sometimes you can digest it better. So, the last time you looked into the mirror, and I want you to be honest now, how many of you in here, when you look in the mirror now, 
You look like you're wasting away. Let's see your hands. Some of you would admit it. <laughs> you're a fine young lady. You know that. <laughs> you're a fine young lady. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Charles, you're wasting away, son. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> uh, I won't, we won't tell Rachel. <laughs> yeah. How many looked you in the mirror and you're a little different than you were 20 years ago? You know, I think this word is right. I remember when Susan, she was 19 years old. Almost a little baby I robbed from the, from the cradle, 19 years old. She looks different now than she did then. But she is still the lily of my valley. She is still my sweetheart. She is still my honey bunny. And it ain't funny. <laughs> See, I know her inner man that's progressively being renewed, being renewed every day. And when I look at her now, whoo, Mama Lou. Now, I know some of you don't understand that, but you know, you're not 83, and when you grow up like me, you'll understand that. That you're st I'm still in love. I tell people, I'm in love with my wife, I love my wife, and I got something else to tell you. I like her. I like her. I like her. Give me five more. Ooh. I like her. Everybody look at your mate and say, I like you. Most of the time. <laughs> All right, see, God has done a great thing. What is man that God is mindful of us? He loves us. Uh oh, look out there, Linda. You're going to get it, honey. Woo, look out now. Woo, woo, woo. All right. Now, let's follow this. Go to the next verse. Oh, right, that's a good verse. Let's read that since he put that up there. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls towards the south or towards the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. In that state, in that growth. Okay. All right, go to the next verse, Second Corinthians. And we'll go to uh, 4... Four, seventeen. Oh, this is good. We've got about 10 minutes and we'll let you go. Now, four, now notice this. You say, well, you know, I'm really in a strait. I'm in a difficult time. This too will pass. Amen. How many has ever been in a strait? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I won't go that way. Okay. For our light. Paul said, now listen. For our, even though you're wasting away, you're decaying every day, your outer man is. But remember, your inner man is progressively getting stronger and stronger. That is, if you're feeding it. Now, for our light momentary affliction, how many has ever read Paul's life? And he's calling all of that light affliction. <laughs> Beaten 40 times with a whip. That don't sound like that's too light to me. Shipwrecked. And all kinds of things happened to Paul. Put in jail. Beaten. Look. This light distress of the passing hour. We're just all passing through. Hate to discourage you. Just passing through this passing hour. Oh my goodness, I thought I could be around forever down here. <laughs> no, it's just a passing hour. I don't care how young you is or how old you is. You're just passing through. Thank God. Because when we get to heaven, it will be forever in a glorified body. And I got news for you. 
You'll be able to eat too. Somebody say, whoo. Yeah. Ice cream and cake. I love that. Collard greens. My favorite collard greens. Look what it says. Is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory. Everything you're going through. Oh, that don't make sense. And remember, God don't think like us. His ways and his thoughts are far beyond our thinking. Everything that we've gone through, and we've all, so many of us have gone through some tough times. But Paul says, light affliction. Light affliction. But it's achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory. Beyond, notice this, beyond everything that happened to us, it's, it's, it's achieving a, a greater weight of glory. Beyond all measure, excessively surpassing all comparisons and all calculation, a vast and transcendent glory and blessedness that never to cease. Whew. Man, I can't hardly wait till this life is over, can you? Not many people take me up on that. But you see, Paul was able to see beyond, like Jesus, he saw beyond the cross and saw the glory that was set before him. How do you know that scripture? You've got to look beyond what you are in right now. Whatever difficulty you may be going through, it is working for you. You read about Joseph in, in, in Genesis chapter 50. All that Joseph went through. Joseph said there in that chapter, that last chapter to his brothers, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Right. And the whole family. Now let's catch this. The whole family. All of his brothers and all the rest were saved. And that's why we have salvation today. Because the lineage was in that family. How many? Are you out there? You see? And so we may go through difficulties and times. This is how you learn. This is how you let the self-life die. And then you learn to live off of his life. Always bearing about in the body... These bodies, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? That also that the life of Christ might be manifested in these mortal bodies. How many of you know resurrection comes before death? Catch me, Willie. You got me. Oh. The cross. Death. The cross. Then, oh, the resurrection. See, God's thoughts are different than ours. Unless you understand that principle, some of the things you are going to, through, is killing that self-life that you love, we all love so well. See, I, 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 I think this and I think that. Well, let me tell you, when the cross is through with you, you won't think anything but Jesus. You'll be, like the, you'll be like Jesus. I don't do anything except the Father tells me to do it. That's real Christianity. Hmm. Look at that. Ah. Wow. Go to the next verse now. Now catch this. Next verse. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen. Uh, <clears throat> can you put yourself in that? Are you part of that we? Since we at the shield consider and look not to the things that are seen, all that difficulties you might be going through, but to the things that are unseen, which are eternal, by the way. For the things that are visible are temporal. 
brief and fleeing. But the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. These spirits of ours that we don't see is eternal. You don't have to worry about death. You don't have to worry about, just like Frank said, he saw us, and I've seen my mother and, and, and people, my uncle, different people just quit breathing. Just as quiet and wonderful. And, and then we wonder, why do we struggle with that? Why do we still have fear? You read in Hebrews that God took the fear that we don't have to fear death because you ain't going to die. Because you see, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth that him should not perish, notice this, should not perish, but have everlasting life. How many believe that in Jesus? Or you have everlasting life. Your life will never end. I said you have, you have everlasting life. So what is there to fear? Somebody go. Nothing to fear. Why can't you be happy? Well, you know, we all have loved ones. I've had all my sister, my brother-in-law, my mother, my father. All my people are in heaven now. And they're all waiting on me. Somehow the Lord's left me down here for you guys for a little while. But they're all waiting for me up there. And I'm ready. I really want to go. But I'm like Paul. It's more expedient that I stay here to make you guys more miserable. <laughs> How many love me just a little bit? Folks, listen. What a great salvation. Now let's, let's finish that. That's good. Look at that. We've read that. Okay, that was verse 18. <laughs> All right. So, death, don't have to worry about it. You might say, yeah, but you know, I only had a, a certain amount of time with my son or my daughter. Listen, they're Christians. You're Christians. You will be able to be blessed by them and spend time with them eternities after 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 eternities you will be able to spend with your blessed husband your son your mother isn't that something and when you were here you're trying to get away from them can you grasp the message or is your mind still not renewed yet? Yeah, you miss them. Yeah, you do. But just this passing hour, look at them like they're going shopping. Well, that's a long time. I shouldn't say that. Let's say. <clears throat> but you see, we're all going to be together again. You're not going to get rid of me. Amen. Sorry. Because I'm going to be in heaven with you. And listen, what are you looking at today? If you look at the things you see, let me tell you something. Everybody look at me. <laughs> You're going down. But when you believe the word of God, and God is telling us through the Apostle Paul, all these things that you see are temporary. I've known hundreds and hundreds of people, and I've preached messages to them. I did their funerals over the years. They're all gone from the earth. But one day they'll be back here on the earth in glorified bodies, never to be sick again. And I want to read this. I'm going to quit. It is found in Revelation 21. Look at this now. Things that you are hard to overcome right now that you might not understand, but you need to understand that God makes no mistakes. Let's read this. Started with 21 verse 1. Now John is talking. He says, then I saw a new sky, a new heaven. Oh, I love that. 
and a new earth. For the former sky and the former earth had passed away. Everything down here is not is temporal. Vanish, and there is no longer exists any sea. The sea is going to, boy, what an earth we have for the population. Next verse. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, all arrayed like a bride, beautified and adored for her husband. All right. She's coming down, the new Jerusalem. Next. Now remember, new earth, new heaven, no sea. Then I heard a mighty voice from the throne, and I perceived its distinct words, saying, See, the abode of God is with men, and he will live in camp, tent among them, and they shall be his people, and God shall, be, shall personally be with them and be their God. Next verse. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be anguish, sorrow, or mourning, nor grief, nor pain any more. For the old condition, the former order of things, have passed away. Next verse. And he who seated on the throne said, See, I make all things new. Also he said, Record this, for these sayings are faithful. Accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy, and true, genuine. Next verse. And he further said to me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I myself will give water without price, and from the fountain springs of water of life. And the next verse, seven. He who is victorious and shall, shall inherit all these things, and I will be a God to him, and he shall be my son. So everything you see here be passed away. It'll be a whole new, brand new world, a different system, totally different than we know down here. But it'll be a blessed place to live throughout eternity with a glorified body. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you. No wonder, Lord, you said.